I'm James Williams Jr. This is video three of reverse racism. So by the time me and her mom got down to close to where our house was so we can go our separate ways, I'm pretty sure this happened on Monday because I believe I took my niece to my grandmother's house to be babysitted because I had to go to work. Um, we're both looking at each other like, why is this happening? Why does this continue to happen? And I had told her mom, you know, like, since they had moved over here, you know, that I've been through so much racially motivated crap in my young life that, you know, I couldn't picture, I couldn't fathom, rather, the concept of these little girls having to deal with another girl of color telling them that their hair is nappy or whatever and how to do this. And I'm like, what? The girl's hair is not nappy. It was just like an afro. It was combed out, you know, and not all afros are nappy. And I was like, well, well, hell, even white people used to rock afros. And I've seen white people with dreadlocks. I don't pass judgment. And I don't say, oh, he just wants to be black. No, fuck that. You know what? You are who you are. If you want to wear dreadlocks and you white, knock yourself the fuck out. You know why? Because no one has the right to tell you that you can't. All right? This isn't fucking post-apocalyptic where everybody wants to rule you. And if you don't follow with the crowd, you get killed. This isn't um, Gattaca. I'm sure you guys don't remember that movie, but it was a pretty good movie. It's not Schindler's List. You have the right to wear whatever kind of hairstyle you want. I'm rocking a ponytail. Granted, I just snapped the rubber band like two videos back, but, you know, it's just the principle of the thing. Who in the hell does a person think they are to tell someone else what they can and can't wear? I don't have that fucking right. Lots of my ancestors on both sides, including the white sides, have died for us to have the right to wear whatever the fuck we want to wear. Okay? Deal with it. But this little girl, I mean, she was pretty strong. She didn't come home crying about it. She just mentioned it to her mom. I think it hurt me hearing about it more than it hurt the little girl. Her and my niece just walked down the street skipping like normal. I'm like, I'm glad they could just brush that off. But back when I was younger, I'm sorry, somebody would have got punched in the face. I mean, it, it, I'm not trying to promote violence, but I did used to fight in the streets as a kid. So like I said, someone would have got punched in the face. They should probably still have taught the girl to punch that little girl in the face. Okay, okay, that was over the top. I probably shouldn't have said that. Can't take it back, can't delete it, can't erase it. But, you know, when does it stop? Does my violent um, response change things? No, it does not. Violence does not change anything. But I guess it kind of all depends on your perspective. Because personally, if I was a little girl, and I've been in those shoes, I would have punched the other little girl in the face. I have punched a girl in the face once for calling me a nigger. And while we're on that, I'm going to um, go off track now. But I'm letting you guys know. There's nothing I hate more than a person who does not keep it real. Alright? And I really mean that and, and all heartedly because I do my best to tell everybody the truth all the time. I try to word it right so that I don't hurt people's feelings. I try to tell the truth all the fucking time because I don't have time to make up something and then I can't remember what the fuck I told you and then there's a lie right there. So why do that? I have a short-term memory because I've trained myself to forget so that I cannot lie on certain situations. All right? But I'm pretty quick on catching up. So there's a fella. His wife, wife works with me. And, and you know, he's a white fella. And I like him, and I'm not going to say his name, because I don't know how many people are watching, and I don't know what their relation is to them. And I'm not going to say her name either, but, you know, I'll be seeing her tomorrow to try and get her a list of supplies that I'll be needing really soon. Don't fuck with me. If you don't like me, just fucking tell me. I will respect you more for you telling me that you don't like me than to do sad stream shit under the breath. Because her husband or ex-husband or whatever the hell their relationship is, he heard me tell one of our co-workers about when I was um, working at Kegler's. Now, all right, I don't have a super bunch of black features. And to me, being called a nigger is bad. Being called cheap is worse. All right? And so, you know, one of the nights that it snowed, he um, drove there to get his wife from work and he thought that I was far enough away that I couldn't hear him and basically I didn't really hear him I thought I heard it but I wasn't sure I heard it but I was far enough that I couldn't run back down there and say something to him and he's done this on more than one occasion now the hardest part of being me 
and because I like his wife and I respect her as a working co-worker, I would hate to bludgeon her husband in front of her. But the thought has crossed my mind on plenty of times. Plus, I like his son. We talk about rustling and everything all the time. But there is a fucking line that people need to know not to cross. And if you're a white person or a black person or an Asian person, you should know this fucking line, too. If you know something that gets on somebody's nerve, don't do it out of spite. All right? So this fella, I was, I was far enough away that I didn't really hear him. I thought I heard him, but you know, sometimes when you think you hear something, you really don't want to act on it impulsively because it might not be what you thought you heard. So I told my coworker and um, his friend about it like way before this incident happened. Then I was telling his friend who was like staying at our job, like it was a hotel or whatever. And I told him, you know, and the guy happened to be there again. So when he left with his wife on that snow day, he hollered, see you later, chief. And I was like, I don't think I heard that. So I kept on doing my job. And then his friend, my co-worker's friend, came rolling down and said, did you hear what he said when he left? He said, nah, what did he say? I thought I heard him, but like I said, I wasn't really sure. And he said, yeah, he said goodbye, chief. And I said, okay. So this is what I got to say about that. You know, if you don't like me, it's fine. There's not a crime in not liking someone. And I'm not going to go busting you in the fucking face because I know Kung Fu. You know, there's a limit to the shit that I'm willing to do. And losing my freedom over you calling me chief is not something that I'm willing to bet the farm on. Not that I couldn't whoop his ass, and he's an older man, you know. My dad raised me better than that, to respect my elders. But, you know, respect is a two-way street. And if you don't like me, you can still respect me if you want to keep your feet and your face in one piece, you know. You can still respect me. If, especially if I've never done nothing to you. I was had a complaint about some of the race cars that have been playing on me at jobs that you work at. They wouldn't hire me because I wouldn't cut my rat tail off because they all were balding. Now, like, see how big my forehead is? Well, their shit went all the way to the back. They had the Captain Picard, you know, Uncle Phil, for the black people who don't know who Captain Picard is. Um, the reverse fade, George Jefferson. All right, so this fucker knows that I don't like racism. I don't like being called any racial name whatsoever. I hate being called nigger. But I hate being called chief even more so because I'm much more prouder of my Native American heritage than my black heritage. I know that sounds fucked up, but it's the truth. I'm not going to lie. I haven't lied about it. I don't care. And I just told you two videos ago that I feel more Native American than black. And the only time that I don't really like being black is when our people do something stupid. All right? Other than that, I don't have a problem being black. I have to prove it to black people that I'm black. Besides me cussing all the damn time, no one believes that I'm black, okay? Well, hey, Native Americans and Asians cuss too. Go see the first movie, The Black Mask with Jet Li in it and see how many times they used the word motherfucker. Count them out. It's about 25 times. I might have missed one or two, but it's about 25 times. So, everybody cusses, okay? That problem's solved. But, you know, a couple of my friends used to call me nigger chink, and I wasn't really fond of that either, but since they're my bros, you know, I kind of let that shit slide. But, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. If I'm in a bad mood, nigger chink is not the best thing that you can say to me. But the worst thing you can ever say to me is chief. Because I've explained it, you know. I gotta sit down again. I'm sorry, my ass hurts. <laughs> I've explained it to people plenty of times. When I worked at Kegler's, it's a local bowling alley. I don't think it's got the same name now. But I know it definitely has different owners. So, this one guy, he did two things. Just two things. That really ticked me off. All right? So 16, you know, 16-year-old James isn't 42-year-old James. 16-year-old James likes to fight. But he had poise and grace. He also couldn't afford to lose his job. So he kind of had to let a lot of shit slide. So this guy used to come in there and play. I got friends in low places. Garth Brooks, I think. The only Garth Brooks songs I know is the Thunder Rose. It's the only one I like. Not in the country music unless it's like Reva McIntyre and I only know one song of hers. And I know a little bit of Shania Shane, but you know, hey, I'm just not really in the country music. I like looking at beautiful women. Enough said. So he would play I Got Friends in Little Places and this motherfucker would go out of his way to call me Chief. And it pissed me the fuck off. Now when I worked at the university... And I, I um, served food and everything. I had one co-worker, a very pretty woman named Lisa Fan. She used to call me Kabuki. 
okay? And then she would call me low fat because I'm so skinny. So that was okay. That wasn't really insulting. I know I'm not Chinese. I know I'm not Japanese. But I carry myself very well with martial arts. And a lot of people have mistaken me for someone who's half Chinese and half Japanese. And, you know, like I said before, Native Americans are Asian. So there you go. Anyway, so when I was telling this guy about this shit, you know, I never ever thought that the things that I tell people would ever come back to bite me in the ass. I'm slowly learning. Some of the things that you tell some people will come back to bite you in the ass. So you can't tell everybody everything. So, I said this to my co-worker's friend. You know, it's always me that people are brave enough to say shit while they're walking away. But they're not brave enough to say the shit to my face. So before I close this video out, I want to know what does it make that people think that they can just say slick shit under their breath that's racial because they know that it gets on my nerve. And like, you know, and I like the guy that said the shit. You know, that's that's the shit that pisses me off. Because I really like him and I respect him. You would think that he would be a little bit more lenient and not do this shit. But he's done this shit like three fucking times. Three times. And it takes everything I can to smile on this motherfucker's face. Knowing full well that in the back of my head, I won't take his ass to the woodshed and throw him a down-home, old-school, black, white, Native American ass whooping. All right? Because you don't, it's, it's not necessary that he does that. It's not. You don't like me? Fine. But you know what? That's where I work. Your wife works there and I work there. You can come pick her up and stay outside the building. Or you can come pick her up. And stay in her office and let me do my job. You don't have to speak to me or anything. You know what I'm saying? Let me do my damn job. You don't have to say nothing to me. You don't have to be under the breath. Hey, chief. Okay, I get it. You don't fucking like me. Tell me that shit to my face so I can respect you, speak to you when I see you, and keep fucking moving. You know, because I'm going to still speak. If you speak to me, I'm going to speak to you. Because whether I like you or not is irrelevant. What matters is that I respect you as a fucking man or a woman, as a person. But if you don't like me, don't say no dick shit under your breath. Because unless you got titties, you fixing to get beat the fuck up. Alright? I'm not trying to be an asshole about this shit. I'm just telling the truth. You fixing to get beat the fuck up. I can work with people that I can't stand. Alright? I can do that. Because professionally, you got to work with a lot of motherfuckers that if you could get away with it, you'd cut their fucking throat at the, the first second that they blink, their throat would be cut. I'm the only one that will fucking say it and own it and mean it. But everybody else will, will cower and, and think it, but they won't say it and they won't mean it. Now, like I said, I'm not going to give up his name. I'm not going to give up the lady's name that he's married to. I'm not going to give up his son or his daughter because I like them. And I like their grandkids, all right? They're almost like family to me. But there, there, there's a limit to the shit that I'm willing to take. And if you don't fucking like me, you know, and it's just like if you don't like this, this video that I'm shooting or anything that I've done, you don't have to be here. You know, I mean, I greatly appreciate your support. But you don't have to be here. No, not really. I mean, there, there'll, there'll be someone else to fill your spot. Or at least, I'm sure hoping that there'll be someone else to fill your spot. But, you know, I honestly think that if you don't like someone, and I don't mean you got to straight up disrespect them about it, but just be open and honest about it. You just straight up tell them, look, I don't mean no disrespect, but as a person, I just don't like you. It's, it's not a crime. Now, I would advise, if you're going to do that, that you don't be in striking distance because you just don't know how someone's going to act. But, you know, I've been at the place for nine damn years. You know, you would think that they would trust me enough to not bust somebody in the goddamn face. Now, granted, I have done some things on the job that probably were not very professional, but I'm cleaning. If I ask you nicely to roll your wheelchair out the way, the least you can do is accommodate me. And just roll your wheelchair out the way. Now, no, I didn't grab Mr. Brown and bull shove him down the fucking hallway. I just rolled him three feet. I vacuumed. And I rolled him right back where he was. I asked the man three times in one hour to please move. I'm going to do a video about that right now.